Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Vice-Chancellor. As I, we say in our world, all protocol is observed. Uh, that means that I acknowledge everyone who's here and uh, very, very happy to see you all. Uh, when I finished my uh, master's here at the university uh, at the age of 22, I never dreamed that I would be spending the rest of my life outside of New Zealand. I never dreamed that I would come back to the university 40 years later um, as a senior advisor to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and I certainly uh, never expected that I would be here tonight among this very distinguished group of alumni. I think last night when we were discussing our careers and we were asked if we have a plan, I think that most of us said we didn't have a set plan, but basically our careers had developed as a result of choices that we made at various crossroads in our lives. And for me, a number of those choices began right here uh, in the university. Uh, I began uh, thinking I was going to do law, and then I was inspired by many wonderful teachers uh, to ultimately do my master's in history. Keith Sinclair, Judith Binney, Nicholas Tarling, uh, and others. Uh, and they taught me uh, so much. They taught me about the power of research, data and analytics, uh, the, the importance of patterns and trends, and perhaps most important, the, the way to link the lessons of history uh, to the present day. And then I did my thesis, which was on the treatment of children in the industrial school system in New Zealand between 1880 and 1925. Not a very happy period. Uh, from that, I, I, got, I re developed interests that I've kept for my whole life, uh, one of them being the way that societies treat vulnerable groups. And I was thinking a lot when the vice chancellor was speaking earlier this evening and also the way in which societies develop public policy. And from that work, which involved a lot of uh, primary source work in the National Archives in Wellington, I found that I really liked research and I thought that I would have a career in academia. And at the time that I was beginning to discuss my PhD and also the idea of going to study abroad, I had the opportunity uh, to join foreign affairs. And so I was asking advice about this choice, which was a major one for me. And many in the university said, don't go, because if you do, you'll never finish that PhD. Well, till now, true, but I never say never. Uh, but others said, including Keith Sinclair, uh, who might have been the supervisor of my thesis, he said, look, this is a very exciting time in New Zealand foreign policy. You have a, a new government. You have a new prime minister. You have a new focus on Asia and the Pacific, our own region. Why don't you think about that? And I went to foreign affairs, and in hindsight, that was a very good choice for me. Uh, in foreign affairs, I had uh, many magnificent mentors. And thinking about them just these last days, I realized that they were all men. And that's because there weren't too many female role models at that time uh, in foreign affairs. It wasn't very long before that that women had had to leave the ministry on marriage, as some in this room know well. Uh, so I think that that is the time that I also began a lifelong interest in gender and, and gender politics. And from there, um, as has been said, I, I went to the UN mission in New York, and there I think I found a true love, which was multilateralism. I think many diplomats prefer bilateral work. It's uh, certainly the objectives are clearer, and usually the results are much quicker. But to me, most issues uh, had a, had a multidisciplinary or a multi-sectoral nature, and there were very few problems that any one country, however powerful, could solve by itself. And so I found the multilateral work very satisfying. And I think that even today, 40 years later, it's perhaps even more important because despite the great progress that we've all seen, the economic and technological progress, we also see increasingly complex cross-border conflicts with horrendous human rights abuses, we see increasing inequities uh, within and between countries. We see the largest number of displaced people in history. Uh, we see climate change. We see uh, international terrorism. So all of these issues uh, that need a multilateral approach. And to me, the essence of multilateralism is bringing people together around a holistic approach that crosses the different elements of, of the UN Charter, so across peace and security, across human rights, and across economic and social development. And it also involves the widest possible partnerships. So not just governments, but civil society, the private sector, and academia. 
It also involves, I believe, a very strong focus on vulnerable groups and particularly on women and girls uh, because probably uh, the number one factor in achieving change and achieving uh, inclusive societies and durable peace is the promotion of gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. So it's a particular pleasure to be here during the week of International Women's Day and also the 125th anniversary of universal suffrage and I do hope that New Zealand will keep its leadership uh, in this area. I'm also glad that uh, the Me Too movement has shed a light on an area of discrimination against women uh, that goes across countries, across cultures, across industries, uh, and I hope that it will lead to, to broader cultural change, and I certainly uh, will be intending to continue to work for that. So I'd like to thank everyone for, for being here tonight. Uh, for me, it's a special privilege because I don't live here. Um, I come home often, but it's just wonderful to see so many friends. Um, it's particularly um, touching to have here um, certain people who I've admired for their international work uh, over the years, Helen, of course, Don, Ken Keith, Gerard, and, and others. Uh, a really uh, a very special thank you to my group of women friends who are here. Many of them have been my friends uh, for over 50 years, and it's a very, very important uh, friendship and support. It means more to me than I can actually say. I want to thank my husband and three daughters who are uh, in uh, the US and unfortunately couldn't be here but have always supported me. And finally, uh, to my mother, who's always been my number one role model, I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to the university for giving me uh, a great start, and thank you for the honor of this award. Good night.